what form of protest do you think is acceptable? There's a Facebook page called Say Nope to the Pope. And what they're doing is they're block booking a whole load of tickets, the free tickets, to go and see the Pope in Crow Park, or not Crow Park, the Phoenix Park. Um, and the reason that they're doing it is they're not going. They're regarding this as a peaceful protest. They're not going to go. They're not using the tickets. There's people talking about that they're going to burn the tickets. And the reason that they're doing this is because they want to make a protest uh, against the fact the about the Catholic Church. It's a protest against the Pope coming here and the Catholic Church and what the Catholic Church stands for and they don't like it. Um, and what do you think of that as a form of protest? Uh, John Hamill is with Atheist Ireland and he's on the line now. You're very welcome to the programme, John. Good morning. What's your thoughts on this? As a for, I think it's a stupid form of protest. Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, certainly I believe in the, the freedom of religion and the freedom of speech. Uh, and to my mind, what that means is if the Pope wants to come to Ireland, he's very welcome to do so. If devout and pious Catholics want to go and see the Pope and worship together with the Pope, uh, I don't think we should disrupt that at all. But if people want to protest, uh, goodness knows there's uh, plenty to protest about. So, for example, uh, this will, the, the state gave the church a sweetheart deal in terms of the money that the religious orders owe to compensate the victims of child abuse in Ireland. Uh, and even though they got a sweetheart deal, the religious orders still haven't paid uh, most of the money that they owe. Um, so uh, if they can't afford uh, to pay the victims of child abuse, it seems strange that they can all of a sudden find 20 million euros to facilitate the jamboree with the Pope. So for sure, there's certainly the, uh, lots to protest about and would support the right of people to protest Um but as you say, I'll be a bit concerned at uh, attempts to disrupt uh, the Pope's visit. Uh, I think if it's the man wants to disrupt come it by not being there, like it seems a particularly <clears throat> mean spirited thing. If you want to protest, go and have a placard outside of the perimeter of, of the Phoenix Park and say, get lost, Francis, or whatever. But to, like to deprive people for whom this is going to be a really big deal, and there are people for whom the visit of the Pope is going to be a huge deal, it just seems a real mean spirited protest to me. Uh, yeah, I quite agree. I think uh, I would be concerned at any attempt to disrupt people's right to go and see the Pope if, if they want. Um, but I, I would also disagree just purely from a tactical perspective. I mean, people like me who are opposed to Catholicism, um, I mean, I, I, I think we should let the Pope uh, speak as much as he likes because every time it seems to me that Catholic bishops uh, talk about uh, the ideas of Catholicism, they just sound more and more... Uh, ridiculous. So we, we started off with this papal visit with an announcement of plenary indulgences for anyone who goes to see the Pope. Um, and what that means is um, that you can get your dead uh, relatives out of purgatory earlier by um, visiting the Pope. Uh, what the Pope says is that even the most devout and pious Catholic can't get straight to heaven. Jesus wants to give them an eye roasting first. Is that, but, uh, is that still a thing story. that they have those plenary indulgences? It, I thought they went it, out years ago. It certainly is, and you can get a plenary indulgence uh, by going to see the Pope uh, when he comes to hit the visit us here in Ireland. So what the Pope is telling us is that um, he has a special arrangement with Jesus that uh, if you go to see him, um, you can pick some of your uh, departed friends and relatives, and he'll get them out of purgatory early for you. Ah, um, and then after... Well, after he's done with the plenary indulgences, then he's going off to visit the site of the operation at Knock, uh, when we're told a 3,000-year-old Jewish woman turned up on a gable wall in Mayo just to say hello. She didn't have a single word to say, couldn't think of a single useful or interesting thing to tell the people of Ireland. It's just give us an idea. And uh, Jesus was there too, and he couldn't think of anything to say either, but Maybe that's uh, understandable because Jesus was dressed up as a sheep at the time. Maybe it's a what? little difficult for Jesus to talk when he's dressed up as a sheep. But you see now, because these beliefs are really important to some people. You know, uh, so yeah, well, like it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, that's a little bit uh, mocking, to be fair, because yeah, the, the people well, are very. This is a different thing of protesting by not turning up is a different thing, and plain reindulgence. This is definitely off the scale, but kind of mock and knock in itself is a little bit too far. Maybe do you not think? Well, I think a good principle to follow uh, on these issues is that no person is beneath respect, but no idea is above criticism. 
So if a, um, an Irish citizen wants to go off to see the Pope in Ireland, I don't think we should disrupt that in any way. And I think uh, all devout and pious Catholics in Ireland are worthy of uh, the full respect uh, that anyone else is entitled to. Against that, if they have a particular idea, no idea is above criticism. So if you propose a ridiculous idea, like uh, plenary indulgences, or the fact that uh, a 2,000-year-old Jewish lady turned up on a gable wall in County Mayo to give us all a wave, then uh, ridicule is an entirely sensible response to a ridiculous idea. As a protest, if you think that, the, the, I presume what they're thinking is the Pope is going to be looking out at thousands and thousands of people, presumably. He's not going to know that there might be 5,000 less than there was expected to be because a bunch of people decided to stay at home. So it's, it seems yeah. like for the, the object of it is going to be completely lost because all you're doing is A, giving the people who do get a ticket more room to stand there and B, you're going to deprive somebody for whom this would be a really, and I know this isn't you, I'm not saying you, but uh, you're going to deprive someone who really wanted to be there from actually turning up in something that you weren't interested in anyway. It's bizarre. Uh, exactly. So, um, uh, I mean, I, I would have a, a lot more sympathy for the latter case that you described. Mm. Um, uh, and that's who it's going to affect. Uh, exactly. So um, if there's uh, devout and pious Catholics in Ireland who want to go and see the Pope, uh, I don't think we should uh, disrupt their right to do that in any way. And um, the campaign that you describe of uh, acquiring and burning tickets certainly isn't anything that Atheist Ireland would be involved with. Um, if any religious leader wants to come to Ireland, whether it's the leader of the majority religion in this country or the leader of any minority religion. Um, I think the freedom of religion is a very important human right, and we shouldn't interfere with the right of the religious to worship as they see fit, as long as they're not uh, harming anyone else in the process. John, thanks a million for talking to me. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye, you too. That's uh, John Hamill there of uh, Atheist Ireland.